Well, good evening and welcome to Pilgrim Congregational United Church of Christ in Lansing, Michigan. This is our Christmas Eve service. Christmas Eve always seems to fall on December 24th for some reason, and it's no exception for this very unusual year of 2020. 2020 has been quite a year. It is a year that most of us would certainly like to forget. Tonight reminds us that even in the dire of times, God is with us. Christ came to be the light in a dark world. And tonight we celebrate the light of Christ given to us by the love of God. Now let us pray the prayer of invocation. Out of the noise and glitter and rush of the world's Christmas, we have come away, O oh God, into this time to be in your presence. Help us to discover here the true meaning and joy that lie beneath the tinsel and the lights of this holy day. Help us to see beyond the baby in the manger to the man Jesus became, to test our lives by his teachings and example. Enable us to see beyond the human Jesus to your incredible love reaching out to us through him, giving us strength and encouragement for the journey of our lives. Then send us out to spread the good news of Jesus born among us. Amen. T'was in the moon of winter time when all the birds had fled that mighty gitchy manitou sent angel choirs in before the light of stars grew dim and wandering hunters heard the hymn, Jesus, your King is born, Jesus is born, in excels his glory. found a ragged robe of rabbit skin and wrapped his beauty round and as the hunter prays through night the angel song rings loud and high Jesus your king is born Jesus is born Excels his glory on. The first scripture reading comes from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 through 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressors, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born to us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it, with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Amen. Hey. 
angels from the realms of glory wing your flight o'er all the earth. He who sang creation story now proclaim Messiah's birth. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Shepherds in the fields abiding, watching o'er your flocks by night. God with man is now resigning, yonder shines the infant light. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. The lighting of the Advent candles. Hope, waiting, belief, healing, and the Christ candle. Yes, tonight our Advent candles will be complete. We light the candles of hope, waiting, believe, healing, and tonight we add the Christ candle. As the Christ candle shines above all the other candles, may Christ shine above all of us to lead us to all that is good. Holy God, take who we are and what we have to offer and raise us now into the choir of angels who sing in exaltation at Jesus' birth. May the light of Christ live in our hearts so it may take away the darkness of the world. May we live in hope, in waiting, belief, and healing of your presence always. Amen. First scripture tonight is from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 1 through 5, and verse 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, 
the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. This ends the first reading. Jesus laid down his sweet head. The stars in the sky looked down where he lay. The little Lord Jesus asleep on the hay. The cattle are lowering, the baby awakes. But little Lord Jesus, no crying he makes. I love the Lord Jesus, look down from the sky and stay by my cradle till morning is nigh. The second scripture is Luke chapter 1 verses 26 to 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting might this be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. It came upon the midnight clear, that glorious song of old. From angels bending near the earth to touch their hearts of gold, peace on the earth. Luke 2, 1 through 7. 
In those days, a decree went out from the Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went out to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and the family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. When we talk about being estranged from God, or being separated from God, or existing without God in your life, we talk about uh, it as walking in darkness. A life without God is like a sighted person walking around in darkness. There could be dangers anywhere. There could be a stone, a stump, uh, a root, or you know, we could put down our feet, we could stumble over this object, lose our balance, we could fall, and there, there could be a hole in the ground. There could be a cliff face that we might walk off and fall. There could be some dangerous animal or even another person ready to attack us for some intrusion into their protected space. The darkness is a dangerous place. We modern people have a hard time understanding because we have lights pretty much everywhere. But in ancient times, night was dark, very, very dark. So the darkness is a dangerous place. Yes, we could stub our toe or we could have something a lot more serious, including die. The physical metaphor of walking in darkness describes the spiritual reality of walking without God. God is like a light. Sometimes that light is like a lighthouse beacon warning us of the dangerous rocks and the shallow waters and directing us to a safe harbor. Sometimes God's light is like a candle in a window of a house welcoming us to a safe and friendly place to get warm and find some nourishment. But always God's light is beckoning us to come closer to God. Always God's light calls us to live well with ourselves and with other people. Always God's light shows us the way to a better life and to a better world. And God's light shows us the way to eternal life. That is what I think of when I read the Isaiah chapter 9. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. God has sent out a light, like a lighthouse beacon, to guide us out of the stormy seas of life and onto the safety of the solid land of God's loving spirit. God's love is a light beckoning us to come and join. God's love is the safe harbor for our souls to find rest and renewal amidst the storms of life. For we Christians, it seems appropriate for us to interpret the words of the prophet Isaiah to mean that Christ is the great light which people walking in darkness have seen. God sent Christ into our world to be the light of the world. And the Gospel of John chapter 1 states that the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. John is, of course, referring to Jesus Christ. The darkness is the deeds of people to destroy, who want to destroy the light of Christ and the good works of God. The evil that people do did not destroy or overcome the light of love and grace that Christ brought into our world. The teachings of Jesus were like light to our darkened minds, 
revealing hidden truths and showing us connections that we were blind to see before. Jesus shines his light for us to discover new possibilities and new ways to live more fully. He called it abundant life. The sacrifice of Christ on the cross and his resurrection are a light to demonstrate God's great love for us. Jesus died on the cross to shine a light on how far God is willing to go for us, to shine a light on how much God loves us. The birth of Christ is a light shining in the darkness. God saw that people's hearts were filled with darkness. There was the darkness in the hearts of those who were enslaved and oppressed. They knew only the darkness of hopelessness and despair. There was the darkness in the hearts of people who knew only violence and fear. They feared the violence and dominance of others, and so they did violence to others to make people fear them. There was a darkness in the hearts of those who saw other people as things to be used and exploited. And not only did they not care for their well-being, but intentionally hurt them and destroyed their spirits. Into this darkness of the human soul, God sent a ray of light, a ray of hope, a ray of divine love in Jesus Christ. The ray of light started small, a baby born in Bethlehem. But years later, when that baby grew up into an adult, that small ray of light became a beacon of hope and love. Jesus lit our way to see that God had not abandoned us, but was with us, and God wanted to help us. Jesus was the light for us to see that God loves us, because only love would move God to give up heaven and become human, to live as we do and experience existence as we do, to feel hunger and thirst, heat and cold, joy and sorrow, only love would move God to die on a cross to see that God loved us, to convince us that God loved us. Because when we realize that we are loved, we step out of the darkness and become light for the world too. When we realize that we are loved, love enters our hearts and begins to change us into what God intended for us to be. We move from a creature motivated by fear to a creation directed by love. Jesus is a light to our better selves and to a better world. Jesus brings the light of God's love in earth by his actions and his teachings. He makes love concrete. And the love that he brings to us and inspires in us gives us hope for a better world. So the birth of Christ to me is the light of God's love being made manifest in the world. The birth of Christ is the light of hope for us and the earth to be what God intended for it to be. The birth of Christ means that we do not walk in complete darkness but we have a guiding light in our lives and in our world. The birth of Christ is a dawning light which can turn our darkness into day. This, this is what the birth of Christ means for me. And now we're going to hear a bit about what other people have to think on this subject. Amen. What does the birth of Christ mean to me? It means that I get to celebrate the birth of a baby, and I also know that as this baby grows into a man, he holds me and he keeps me safe, and he will for all eternity. Isaiah seven fourteen says, Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, God with us. To me, that is the meaning of Christmas. God with us. God with us through all of our trials. Um, you know, the 
God helping us and walking us through our hardships helps us to get through them. And those hardships become a part of us. We work together to try to also show that love of God to other people so that they don't feel alone. The other thing that is important to me about Christmas is the music associated with Christmas. This is important to me because it seems like it's a way to connect to God, to connect with the people around in joyous harmony. I, I believe that music can be magical at Christmas time and it can do things that bring people together in ways that we didn't know could be. What does the birth of Christ mean to me? The birth of Christ means to me mainly love. The love that Mary and Joseph had for God that they would be his servants, their love for each other, and their love for Jesus as they protected and nurtured him. Uh, the love of the wise men and the shepherds as they made their way to the manger to worship Jesus. And most important of all, the love that God has for each and every one of us that he sent Jesus to earth to show us how to love one another and to save us so that we would have eternal life. So I wish for all of us this Christmas, although we're apart from loved ones, I wish that we feel the warmth of the love of our families and friends and the love of God in our hearts. Okay, it's going. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas and a Happy New Year. <laughs> Christmas is the happiest time of the year. It's the best because it's Jesus' birthday. And what better time to celebrate than December 25th? It just makes the end of the year special and festive and just wonderful. And we get to see all of our nice friends from our church and enjoy them too. Merry Christmas to everyone. I miss each and every one of you and can't wait until we can worship together again. Merry Christmas to all pilgrims. Uh, we deserve much more. And I thank you for, to God for all that we have now. Amen. Well, I want to wish all my pilgrim friends and family a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Hope to see you all soon. Okay, the birth of Christ just enriches everything about the church experience, all the good stories and um, everything in the Bible. And once again, Christmas Eve, hearing all those good tales of birth of Christ and how he enriches everybody's life and um, I think makes things better. Jesus, Jesus, oh, what a wonderful 
This is from Luke 2, verses 8 through 14. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plains, and the mountains in reply, echo back their joyous strains. Oh, Oh, <laughs> 
Angels are Emmanuel. Hark the herald angels sing. Glory to the newborn King. Hail the heavenward Prince of Peace. Hail the Son of Righteousness. Light and life to all He brings. Praise with Him. Luke chapter 2, verses 15 through 20. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds had told them. But Mary treasured all of these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. Watch their flocks by night, all seated on the ground. The angel of the Lord came down, and glory shone around. A heavenly babe you share shall find to human view displayed. All mainly wrapped in swaddling bands and in a manger land. 
The light of God's grace and redeeming love is upon you. A child is born to us. Christ is born. He is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Prince of Peace. The Word of God has become flesh and lived among us. Let Christ's light shine in the darkest corner of your life. Let Christ's love shine in the darkest corners of our world. Fear not. God is with us. Go forth in the peace of Christ. A blessed Christmas to you all. Amen.